Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So today we have a new topic that is preventive resin restorations. So I mentioned this in my uh, Bitten Fisher sealant uh, session. This is a restoration rather than a sealant. Restoration we do when there is involvement of caries. So it is uh, cutting enamel and uh, filling up with materials uh, compared to just sealing of the pits and fishes. So let's see more details about PRR or preventive resin restoration. So it is a very uh, newer technique uh, where uh, we have a better advantage compared to the traditional amalgam restorations. Uh, but uh, the main problem it requires a excellent isolation of moisture and saliva contamination and if it is properly done which has a very long term success compared to the traditional amalgam and we know how amalgam is uh, getting uh, replaced from dentistry because of its uh, limitations of its bone strength emotional leakage and uh, a lot of tooth need to be removed when we apply amalgam because it has specifications uh, like it uh, requires a minimum of 1.5 millimeter depth of uh, cavity and a 90 degree butt joint should be present so we might uh, end up removing a lot of uh, a lot of normal tooth structure for the sake of amalgam restoration so that all are uh, removed uh, from um, this PRR technique where we think of a more conservative approach where the minimal tooth is removed. So PRR uses both invasive and non-invasive treatment of mostly borderline or questionable caries. So mostly this non-invasive treatment we have seen uh, in Pit and Fisher sealant that is a non-invasive treatment. The invasive procedure also involved in preventive resin restoration because it is a restoration. The sealant process and restoration process is entirely different. Sealing off will not be involving any of the cutting enamel but uh, restoration involves uh, removal of to structure. So this resin placed in caries areas and adjacent caries susceptible areas and seals them from the local environment. So we can use both sealant and restoration on the same tooth depending upon the caries involvement. Suppose we have deep pits and fissures or tooth surface, we uh, think of only sealant therapy. So we just apply sealant. Uh, we not uh, need to we don't need to uh, apply any restoration because there is no caries involvement but uh, the picture is not very clear you can see a black marking this is caries so we can apply sealant on all these places but we need to restore this point so that is preventive resin restoration so we are restoring this point and sealing all other points okay So if caries is present in one area or part of the pit and fissures, so that particular area, that is this particular area is restored and the remaining part is protected with sealant. So that process is known as preventive resin restoration. If we do just restoration also uh, with minimal uh, intervention, with minimal uh, loss of toe structure, it is known as preventive resin restoration. If, if it is along with sealant also, it is known as preventive resin restoration. So the three types that is type A, B and C based on the extent and depth of caries lesion. So this is type A which is confined to enamel only. Uh, the caries is confined to enamel. So we can uh, just using a very small bar, we can make a very small preparation because it is uh, only confined to enamel. So it's low speed bar can do its job, remove any decalcified enamel. And we can use an unfilled resin or a sealant to restore the preparation of caries lesion because it is very minimal involved. So an unfilled resin is fine or even a sealant can do. But whereas type P which is uh, completely involved in enamel and it has just entered dentine where 
we need to apply more stronger material uh, because filler content to uh, filler content uh, we need to uh, add or a material with filler need to be placed because more uh, material means more strength it requires because of the masticate reload so preparation also is by uh, round bore size 2 and uh, we need to remove as much as uh, normal to structure possible minimal to structure possible we don't need to uh, remove unwanted uh, to structure like for amalgam illustration but the type is very bigger cavity uh, completely involved enamel and almost the dentine but it doesn't reach to, uh, pulp so what we do is uh, we are mm, going for a bigger large size uh, bar and a bevel is placed on the enamel cava surface margin and we need to use both the material that is unfilled resin layer then we have to use a filled composite okay so both should be used because the cavity is very big so type a type b type c as you can see unfilled filled and a combination okay here we are using both unfilled unfilled resin and a composite so what are the steps involved in the PRR so the first process is prophylaxis then it should be isolated with rubber dam or cotton rolls any decalcified areas over the tooth surface to be removed with burr acid etching should be done then washing and drying bonding agent to be applied and then cavity to be restored with sealant or filler material so these are the basic steps we apply for uh, any uh, uh, sealing or any restorations which involves a uh, curing light because acid etching uh, and this bonding agent is a steps which involved where we apply curing light so type A, type B and type C has different uh, approaches in preparation of cavity. So advantages is the minimal cavity preparation compared to the conventional amalgam restoration because it prevents unnecessary removal of healthy tooth structure. So it seal carries and it also destruction of tooth. So this picture says how much uh, it cost for a amalgam conventional restoration because as you can see there is a lot of restoration present and once it goes here most of the tooth is restored because we are unwantedly removing the normal tooth structure for the sake of amalgam requirements ultimately we end up losing the tooth but in PRR it is just the carries areas we are restoring or sealant we are applying where it is carries prone so there is no unwanted removal of the tooth structure so the longevity is obviously very greater than compared to the conventional amalgam so nowadays amalgam is uh, nowhere used in dentistry all we are using a conservative approach uh, with minimal tooth loss So loss of restoration and subsequent replace, replacement proves to be less invasive than that for conventional amalgam. So precautions, early loss of PRR is almost similar as pit and fissure sealants because of the insufficient etching. So it is very important to maintain the excellent isolation and moisture contamination. So these are the very critical steps even in the pit and fissure sealants, the isolation and uh, prevention of moisture contamination if it if moisture is involved the longevity will be compromised okay so that's all about uh, preventive resin restoration there are three basic types and always keep in mind that sealant is different from pit and, pit and, uh, preventive resin restoration one is restoration and one is sealant in sealant there is no caries involvement we are blocking the pit and fissures which are caries prone in preventive resin restorations we are restoring the caries spot but with a very minimal in, in, in intervention because with type a type b type c along with if there is any areas which are caries prone without any caries involvement 
we can seal it off so that's all about prevent recent registration uh, it is a very small chapter it comes along with art patent fissure sealant and prr so i'll come up with a new session on dentistry and more thank you